good evening, my dear friends, my brothers and sisters. I trust that you're doing well in these trying times and also staying safe. You will kindly forgive my voice. Uh, the usual melodious voice you're used to has taken some stress as a result of a lot of talking on the campaign trail. But I thank all of you for joining us tonight to discuss our dear country about jobs, job creation, and entrepreneurship. I plan to call you all individually to say thank you for accepting the invitation from our friends from Accra Speak to interact with me. But we finally ended yesterday after midnight. But I hope all the same that you got my text messages. Let me also say hello to the millions of Ghanaians who have joined us via radio, TV, and online. Tonight is a continuation of an ongoing purposeful conversation about the forward march of our dear country, the transformation of Ghana for all Ghanaians and not just a few. I've been having this conversation with different stakeholders. Last week we met with professional groups. It was exciting, refreshing, and a mutually beneficial engagement. I'm always happy to interact with your good selves, young business leaders, entrepreneurs, and let me add, achievers. This is because you represent the future and the future of Ghana's socio-economic transformation into an advanced economy, an economy that creates jobs and opportunities for all its people. Therefore, our quest to create 250,000 jobs every year, that's one million jobs in the minimum in four years, will be successful if and only if we work with you and all stakeholders. Ladies and gentlemen, in this very hall tonight, we could have Ghana's future captains of industry and other successful innovators and entrepreneurs. And in this very hall and across our nation, there are several women and girls, young people watching us who must be encouraged to take after the courage, industry, and entrepreneurial spirit of our celebrated Madame Esther Oklu of Nkulenu Industries fame, who pioneered small loans to stimulate business. This is needed because I'm speaking to you at a time when the indigenous financial sector of our country has been dealt a crushing blow by this administration. This has not only led to massive job losses and dwindling credit for startups and SMEs in general, but has also placed many Ghanaian homes and businesses in a very difficult situation. As a result, a hopeless and debt distress situation has been occasioned within the business community because the economic outlook is dire. But there is hope. There is hope because Ghana has people such as you. I'm ready, very ready to lead our nation out of the ashes of both the financial sector crisis and the general mismanagement of the economy. And I believe that Ghana will rise again. And this is the reason why I have accepted immediately the invitation to meet you tonight, to hear you speak your minds about the future of our nation. Indeed, your voice matters. Everyone's voice matters. In these last few years, we have seen more than at any time in our recent history that our country cannot move forward if we do not focus on the issue of inclusion. Listening to one another and providing opportunities for all instead of giving room to exclusion and division. No country in the world has accomplished anything of worth with an us versus them mentality. It is critical, therefore, that as leaders we recognize, welcome, respect, and accept diverse constructive views from all our people, including young men and women, if we are to build an inclusive society for ourselves and generations to come if we are to achieve true sustainable development. And this is why I'm particularly delighted about tonight's engagement. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish to congratulate all you long, young leaders, entrepreneurs, and achievers. Your presence here tells a story, and that story is that you have rejected the notion that life only begins at 40, as the fast that it really is. Sometimes I go on social media, particularly WhatsApp, Facebook and Twitter, 
and I get thrilled reading and appreciating the depth of knowledge and the many inclusive thoughts and ideas that are shared by young people on subjects spanning governance, science, technology, engineering, agriculture, entrepreneurship, and many more. Some of you have proven that you more than deserve a seat at the decision-making table of national affairs. There are many brilliant stories of perseverance and effort, and yet there are many other stories of broken dreams and despair because of the lack of opportunity to live those dreams and bring them to reality. Many young people are looking for the slightest push in life to start a business, expand a business, an employment opportunity, and for some the opportunity to develop skills to meet the demands of the world of work. This is a reality we must confront and urgently if the Ghanaian youth will be able to eke a decent living to relieve parents from overdependence of their adult children on them. We will provide that needed push under a new NDC administration. With a Ejumapa jobs plan, tax cuts for jobs and skills development initiatives, we of the NDC have taken a position that it is the responsibility of government to create an enabling environment to find sustainable jobs for our citizens, particularly the young people. We will create that supportive environment and opportunities for the creation, growth and expansion of new and existing businesses. We will deliberately ensure indigenous Ghanaian businesses benefit fully and significantly from all projects funded by the government of Ghana. At this point, let me share with you some of the proposals we have put together in what we call the People's Manifesto, which is our social contract to provide jobs and prosperity to all Ghanaians. In our next government, God willing, from January next year, we'll provide the best and most supportive business environments for businesses, particularly Ghanaian-owned businesses. We shall put Ghanaian businesses at the center of economic growth, because it is only when Ghanaian businesses thrive that our economy can grow and create jobs and prosperity for our citizens. Mere GDP numbers are not sufficient unless the proceeds of that GDP growth stay in our country and benefits our people. This is especially important because a significant percentage of our country's economy or GDP is controlled by foreign entities, leading to huge capital outflows. We have to create more opportunities for Ghanaian businesses in order to staunch this bleeding and retain more within in order to create the multiplier effect that will allow for an accelerated economic takeoff. We started it before and we'll make it even better. We provided support to the indigenous Ghanaian ph pharmaceutical industry. This was injected into several indigenous pharmaceutical companies, which allowed them to retool their factories, expand production, in increase their labor force. This strategic injection enhanced their ability to export into the sub-regional market. We set up the Youth Enterprise Support Initiative and provided young Ghanaians with entrepreneurial skills and capital to set up their own businesses. I remember vividly the inauguration of the YES Initiative and the subsequent presentation of funds to the, the beneficiaries. I remember the sparkle in their eyes at the prospects to be able to start their own businesses. Under the Ghana Free Zones Authority, Several factories and industries were established, including the Wankan Ceramics and Tiles Factory for the manufacture of floor and wall, wall tiles in the Western region. Also, we preserved government contracts as much as possible for textbook printing for local printing firms and inaugurated a private sector-led gold refinery. We ordered more sandals for young, from young Ghanaian shoemakers for distribution under our school centers for, uh, for school children program. <coughs> in agribusiness, we also invested in the rice and poultry industry and embraced the need for boards to be established for rubber, oil palm, and cashew. In addition, several coal stores and a factory at Almina for the storage and processing of fish were established along our coastline. 
And talking about Elmina, my running mates, Pastor Nanel Naji and Opoku Ajima, will not forgive me if I leave out their abandoned Commander Sugar Factory. We've done it before without pomp and pageantry, and we'll do it even better tomorrow. And our program to create 250,000 jobs every year, 1 million jobs in four years, Ghanaians will be given advantage in the financial sector, in construction, in energy, oil, gas and petroleum, agriculture, agribusiness, ICT, and other sectors, which has strengthened the regulatory framework, restore and work actively to increase the indigenous Ghanaian stake in the financial sector, especially in banking, microfinance, and savings and loans enterprises. We will also restore the lost jobs. Ladies and gentlemen, given that it is the indigenous Ghanaian banks and not the traditional foreign banks that typically lend to our small and medium scale enterprises to stimulate our economy, that's, this is going to be a major priority for us. We will introduce a tiered banking system that allows indigenous Ghanaian businesses to invest in the financial sector and offer credit products targeted at different segments of the market. Not every finance house needs to be a mega bank. In order not to suffocate businesses, especially following the shocks from COVID-19 and the general mismanagement of our debt burdened economy, we shall offer tax reliefs to small businesses, including startups. Beginning from next year, all small businesses will be enti exempted entirely from corporate income tax, as promised in the People's Manifesto. We will also reduce corporate income tax from 25% to 15% for medium-sized companies. And newly established medium-sized companies that employ up to 20 staff will be exempted entirely from paying corporate income tax <coughs> for one year. And same will be enjoyed for two years if you employ more than 20 Ghanaians. We know you have to import to do business. We will exempt commercial vehicles and other equipment imported into the country for commercial, industrial and agricultural purposes from import duty. And to save our struggling local automotive industry in Swami magazine, Konkompe Abusokain, from collapse, we will review the Customs Amendment Act 2020 and scrap the law which bans the importation of salvage vehicles. Vehicle assembly plants must operate as a complement to local industry, but not to cancel and take the daily bread of hundreds of thousands of Ghanaians. My dear entrepreneurs, we want you to locate some of your businesses in rural areas where the raw materials are produced. You create jobs and help address the phenomenon of rural urban migration. Therefore, we'll introduce a rural investor incentive RII for short, to motivate you to do just that. Under the RII, we will exempt you from dividend and capital gains tax and provide additional special tax incentives for indigenous value chain entrepreneurs in mineral processing, petroleum based uh, uh, industry, agro processing, and pulp and paper based industries. We shall introduce a special tax incentive to Ghanaian businesses in the export-oriented industry, EOIs, to stimulate exports, propel the shipping industry, to make Ghana a world-class cargo hub on the West African coast. Processing of cashew, cocoa, shea, palm, cassava, pepper, ginger, fruits, and rubber, and many other agro-products will also be emphasized to put money in the pockets of both farmers and entrepreneurs. My brothers and sisters, the future under an NDC administration looks good for Ghanaian indigenous businesses. When I established the Ghana Exim Bank in 2016, my dream was for the bank to promote exports and create jobs. I did not envisage the current lack of transparency in the disbursement and flagrant abuse of the funds of the bank or non-core activities to the neglect of many core and legitimate viable business plans, some from many hard-working young Ghanaians. 
uh, refocus the operations of the Exim Bank back to its core mandate of promoting Ghanaian business for exports. The Exim Bank under my watch will, in addition to other funding streams, support agriculture and agribusiness especially for both the domestic and export markets through the creation of agro-production and processing zones in all major crop producing areas across the country. It will also support the digital economy and fund ICT innovations. The Accra Digital Center, which was purpose to provide 24-7 jobs for the youth, will begin business process outsourcing activities on a much larger scale. We will establish additional regional digital centers to provide young entrepreneurs with platforms to hone their innovative skills amongst others. E-commerce will also be prioritized on a government-supported platform that will promote made in Ghana goods. We intend to run a 24-hour economy, which will be three shifts of eight hours long each. This, this will mean more employment and even more important, greater productivity and growth for our economy. We shall make it seamless so that it will become a norm, just like pertains in other parts of the world. Recently, when I taught the mining communities in the Western region, I pledged that justice will be served for those who have been treated unfairly, those who had their excavators, vehicles, water pumps, and other such equipment seized and given to NPP cronies to do the same illegal mining that um, they, they was being fought against. Justice must prevail. It is their right, and I pursue it. I believe we must regulate small-scale mining to protect the environment and ensure safe mining so that the young people in those communities can have a source of livelihood for themselves and their families. So I inform them that the next NDC government will institute a gold board which will work with the investor of mines, Takwa, and regulatory agencies to ensure they reclaim and protect the environment while they go about their business. To add value to their products, we must and we shall refine more of our gold for export. The private sector is inv invited to invest in this sector too, and we'll encourage all those who want to invest to do so. Let me assure you also that we propose to involve the Bank of Ghana in certifying quality refined Ghanaian gold, and we'll work with the Kwame Kruman University of Science and Technology Jewelry Training Center to establish a first class unique jewelry market in Ghana. This is our strategy to create decent jobs in mining communities. Ladies and gentlemen, there is indeed a lot to look up to in the next four years under my presidency, God willing. We are presenting to you workable and practical solutions and that is why we are not afraid to allow the sunlight of scrutiny into our manifesto. But we know that to achieve these noble programs and projects and to create one million jobs in four years, we also need infrastructure. We need infrastructure, roads to create access for passengers, raw materials and goods, digital real estate and 5G networks to propel jobs and the economy as a whole, hospitals to implement free primary health care, to ensure a healthy and productive nation. Schools to end the double track system to make free SHS pro the free SHS program better. And indeed many more of such infrastructure. And that's why we are paused to roll out a 10 billion big push investment in infrastructure development. The 10 billion US dollar big push will also put our six newly created regions and other deprived regions on an even keel with the already well endowed regions so that no one is left behind in terms of our development. The $10 billion big push investment in five years will complete abandoned projects and projects commenced by current and previous administrations. The Eastern Corridor Road will be one of the key priorities for completion. Major markets will be re-engineered and constructed in Accra, Aflao, Mankesin, Techiman, Kintampo, Sampa, Elubo, Nima, Madina, Asesewa, and many others. Architects, engineers, surveyors, contractors, artisans must be of good cheer because only locally registered professionals 
contractors and artisans will be used under this policy. And we anticipate that this will create more than 400,000 jobs. So I say to you, you all Ghanaian registered businesses, today, position yourselves for better days ahead in the coming months and over the next four years. Ladies and gentlemen, as government and entrepreneurs create jobs and we roll out the Big Push infrastructure program, we will need the youth to implement these projects. We needed them when we were work, working on the University of Ghana Medical Center, the Greater Accra Regional Hospital, and the Ghana East Hospital. We needed them during the expansion of the Tema Port. We needed skilled youth and same applied for the construction of community and secondary schools across the whole country. We needed them for the construction of major interchanges like Kaswa and Kwame Nkrumah Interchange. We will need more of them going forward and even more as the oil and gas sector expands. I'm determined to further pursue the skills and TVET programs, which we've begun to complete the conversion of polytechnics into technical universities and, in addition, rebrand TVET education while making it entirely free for all Ghanaians. The National Apprenticeship Program will also pay for master craftsmen and women and artisans to equip and train our youth with the skills to go into the world of work. Ladies and gentlemen, job creation will not only be the burden of entrepreneurs and the private sector. This explains why we've conducted a thorough human resource gap analysis into the public sector. The analysis showed that there's more room for graduate employment in the public sector as well. The Ghana Health Service has a human resource gap of 76,795 personnel. The Ghana Education Service has an even higher gap of 98,650 personnel. The security services, the National Fire Service, Immigration, Prison Service, Police Service, Armed Forces have over 100,000 personnel uh, gap among them. NAPCO and the youth in temporary employment within the public sector and graduates can be assured that they will be transitioned into permanent employment based on this human resource gap analysis we have conducted. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, let me end by thanking you once again for joining me tonight for this engagement on jobs and entrepreneurship. We are poised to address unemployment and to help entrepreneurs to overcome the challenges which stifle their growth. Access to opportunity under my administration will not be based on your political color, your ethnicity, or which family you come from, or what your name is. We'll do our part as a government and provide opportunities for all, and we invite the private sector to join us as we create 250,000 jobs every year, 1 million jobs in four years for Ghanaians. We've thoroughly considered the program and the projects and the approaches we know they are feasible and innovative. The big push, tax cuts for jobs, and massive investment in agribusiness. And so I urge you to vote for the NDC and for me on December 7th. And let us together create jobs and transform our nation. On this note, I'm ready for the next phase and for any questions that you may wish to ask me. Thank you very much.